In this short lecture, I will give a brief introduction to the theory of Clifford Ellsworth. Let capital F be our base field, uh, which will assume to be of characteristic different from two, and V um, finite dimensional F vector space. of dimension D and suppose that it comes equipped with the quadratic form so let me recall you that means too that this map has two properties it's not linear instead it is quadratic in this sense so we have this equality for every scalar and every vector in V. And also we can consider this associated map from V cross V to F that sends the, this pair to the following element of F. And this map is actually F bilinear. So this is what it means to be a quadratic form. And now associated to a quadratic form, we can define uh, the Clifford algebra. So this was introduced by Clifford uh, in 1873, so a long time ago. And it's defined as follows. So you you take simply you take the tensor algebra, you take this sum, we tie going from zero to infinity of all the tensor powers of V. So this is uh, this is the tensor algebra on the vector space V. So it's uh, it's an algebra because we can concatenate elements, it's a non-commutative algebra, and then we mod out by a two-sided ideal generated by the elements of the form x tensor x minus q of x. So this is a two-sided ideal. So what uh, a remark, what are we doing when we are imposing um, this quotient? So let's make a very quick computation. So remark that this uh, minus this minus this. So this is in the Clifford algebra. That's the same thing as Q X plus Y minus Q X minus Q Y. So we have this equality in the Clifford algebra. And then the left hand side is just the, uh, if you make the computation, it's this tensor plus this tensor. And on the right hand side, this is the definition of our bilinear form associated to the quadric on the pair xy. So this is telling us that the anti-commutativity of two elements is measured by this bilinear form associated to the quadric. In particular, they anti-commute if and only if x and y are orthogonal to each other. So this is uh, what is the Clifford algebra is actually doing. So the, the Clifford algebra, as defined above, uh, is a 2D dimensional um, F algebra. And uh, one may check the following so, uh, that if you have a basis, suppose that you have a basis x1, etc., uh, xd, if this is a basis, a basis of V, then when you look at the vectors of the following form, X, I1, tensor, etc., X, I, N, where the I1 is greater or equal than one, and then it's strictly less than I2, etc., until I, N, which can actually be a D. Then when you make all these possible tensors, so this is actually the basis 
of your Clifford algebra. So I'll let you check this. It's a very interesting uh, observation that actually uses the above remark. Okay, so it's a finite dimensional algebra, in fact, in contrast with the tensor algebra, which is not finite dimensional. So when you impose this relation, we get this finite dimensionality. Okay, so what uh, can we say about this uh, um, about this Clifford algebra? Well, the main motivation is that, in fact, the Clifford algebra generalizes the quaternion algebras. So let's suppose that we have two non-invertible elements of our base field, sorry, two invertible elements of our base field, and uh, consider the following quadratic form, define of f plus f going to f, that send uh, x and y to uh, alpha x squared plus beta y squared. Then what I claim is that then the associated Clifford algebra associated to this quadratic form, it turns out to be actually equivalent to, to the quaternion algebra alpha beta. So let's see why that is the case. So let's suppose that we choose these elements uh, I1, so the classical basis for the F plus F, and then I2, two, so 0, 1. Um, so this is a, a basis. This is a basis. This is a basis uh, of f plus f, and consequently, if we use the above remark about the basis of the Clifford algebra, we get that this one e one e two, and then e one e two. So this element e one e two seen in the Clifford algebra, it's actually a basis of the Clifford algebra. So the Clifford algebra will be four-dimensional in this case, as all quaternion algebras. So we just need to check the uh, multiplication between these generators. So E1 square, so this is, by the, is equal to E1 tensor E1. So we know by the relation on the Clifford algebra, this is the evaluation of quadratic form at E1. And if you go to this specific quadratic form and you evaluate at E1, you get alpha. This, Similarly, if you do the square of E2, so this element, you know that in the Clifford algebra, this is the evaluation of the quadratic form here. This is beta. So it exactly has the definition of the quadratic of the quaternion algebra. And then also we have this relation E1, E2 plus uh, E2, E1. You know that it's equal to the evaluation of the quadratic form at E1, E2, as we have observed in this remark. So the, the evaluation of the quadratic form gives us the anti-commutativity. So you see here that this is actually equal to zero because I've chosen two orthogonal vectors. So they anti-commute these generators. So we see that this is in fact an isomorphism. It, it suffices to send this generator i and j. They correspond on this side precisely to, the, to this vector e1 and to this vector e2. Okay, so Clifford algebras, they generate, they uh, generalize uh, quaternion algebras. Well, let's see some properties of these Clifford algebras. So one interesting property is that they are Z2 graded. There is a Z2 grading. Uh, why? Because this element here is of degree two. This element here is just a scalar, so it's of degree zero. So when you go to the definition of your Clifford algebra, so the tensor algebra is actually n-graded, but this uh, two-sided ideal uh, is not homogeneous, but these elements have the same parity. So we actually get uh, Z2 grading on the Clifford algebra. So the Clifford algebra is Z2 graded. And so we know that uh, it's actually, it meets a decomposition like this with a zero part and one part, where this it's in fact uh, F subalgebra. And it turns out that it's dimension of this, uh, of this uh, subalgebra is two power D minus one. So it's half of the dimension of the 
Clifford algebra. And another in interesting feature of Clifford algebras is that they carry an evolution, or an evolution, which is given by, so if you have an element of this form, uh, what you can do is can assign to it the, uh, this element. So you really reverse the order. And this leads actually to an isomorphism between the Clifford algebra and uh, its opposite, as in the case of quaternion algebras. And also this restricts to the degree zero part and also gives you an isomorphism. So again, similarly, as the quaternion algebras, these ones are isomorphic to their opposites. So the important fact uh, is the following, is that uh, let's assume uh, that the quaternion algebra, that the quadratic form, sorry, is non-degenerate. So non-degenerate, as is the case, for example, in our example here of quaternion algebras, so what does it mean to be non-degenerate? That means, that means that the associated bilinear form is non-degenerate. So in this case, we have the following result. So if the dimension is even, then the Clifford algebra uh, is a central simple F algebra of dimension 2D. And when D is odd, the degree zero part of the Clifford algebra is again a central simple algebra of dimension 2D minus one. So you see that uh, we are generalizing the quaternion algebras to higher dimensions. So you get many more examples of central simple algebras. If you would like to learn about another uh, generalization of quaternion algebras, stay tuned for the next lecture.